Hello everyone, this is the Jenkins platform SIGBeating. Today we're on the 7th of May 2024. Today around the table, just the two of us, uh, Mark Wade and myself, Bonneverge, and if anybody shows up, we'll welcome them. On the agenda, I have the container image updates for the Jenkins controller, same for the Jenkins agents. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Docker Hub uh, 429 errors. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Docker Base Quick Start tutorial, maybe the Docker Hub description for the agent. We'll talk about the work in progress on images. Uh, we may talk, if time permits, about the plugin with Java 17 minimum dependencies, uh, Adoption Summit, and Java 21 support 2 plus 2 plus 2. Mark, is there anything else you'd like to add to the agenda? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Actually, we should. We should at the end before the two plus two plus two. Let's talk about Spring Security upgrade oh. to six dot x because it's a How? platform thing. Yeah. Or do we already I have managed it to remove this one? I, I, I had it earlier, and it disappeared. Silly me. Well, I think we've not talked about it in quite a while, and so really? let's let's. I think it's worth a reminder that. Oh yes, there it is. It's Good. Okay. There. It's oh, maybe, maybe it's already it's in Java 21, oh, right? That's, that's great. Why. So, uh, if you can just make it a top level item, because yeah, of course. yeah, it it really it is separate from the Java 21 support. Yeah, and uh, great the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, there you go. That's okay. um. By the way, I hope you can read my screen. I made it. Beginner. It's great. Uh, okay. This is this <laughs> is you. presentation quality. Yes. Cool. Thank you. So uh, let's start. Container image update for the Jenkins controller. We have a breaking change, which is the removal. Oh, sorry, Mark. Go ahead. You recording's on, right? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Oh yes, I see it. Thank you. Good to continue. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mark. You never know. I could have forgotten it. So we have a breaking change, which is the removal of the deprecated install plugin .sh script from Linux GDK 11 images. I think that the last set of images. Oh, of course, I didn't put the right link. Yeah, well, and um, don't don't worry about it. This one is worth a simple description. I actually was torn whether or not this should be even flagged as a breaking change. Really? Because okay. Right, because what, what the change is, previously this script did an exit one, if you called it. Uh -huh. Now, if you call it, the Docker file that you're calling it from will fail, which would fail the Docker file, right? Exit okay. one will stop the Docker file immediately. Um, now it's non-existence will stop the Docker file. So that's, it's not a, not a dramatic difference in terms of actual behavior. So we may remove the breaking change. No, no. Breaking change is, no. it's correct. It is because we took something away. I think it's fair to say yeah. we took it away, but, but what we did was actually on the on the edge of not being breaking it's 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 yeah. tough to say yes it's breaking we took a file away but the file change was actually already broken intentionally so it was consciously and intentionally chosen to be broken in this way so it breaks in a different way but you never know how people would use that so you never know okay right breaking, breaking exactly change. easiest to say that hey this is change okay thank you mark <laughs> Uh, then we bump Debian Bookworm to the l latest version. Of course, also a new version of UB9. Our plugin manager was bumped to 2.13.0. Yes, it looks like it makes you happy, Mark. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, so which th one? This one's valuable. It, it got a minor change because Tim Jacome removed an unnecessary request to updates.jenkins.io that this thing was oh, doing. Which is good in terms of money, so, I guess. <laughs> right. We we pay for every request. The Jenkins project has to pay for bandwidth use to updates.jenkins.io. And mm -hmm. so reducing the volume of requests is a good thing. Cool. Yeah, so thanks to Tim very much. Thank you. Um, in the change log, the last, no, two weeks ago, you said that you would have to change the, um, uh, to make a note in the change log, which you did, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So we now added to the change log, you added to the change log that we are providing a gelling JDK for Windows, which was not the case earlier. So that's all sorted out. And what is the use of gelling? As far as I know, it allows to have a more, um, a smaller 
and more, I would say customized, it's not customized, except that we are using some uh, specific options. So maybe it's customized. Uh, and it's a smaller JDK to, um, yeah, it's a smaller JDK. Mark, what would you have to add to that? Yeah, so JLink, JLink allows us to create something that looks somewhat like the, the old concept in Java 8 of a JRE, a Java runtime environment. We're, we're telling it, we want to, we want to construct something that meets our needs and, and it's, it is smaller than, than the full JDK distribution. So why not? Yeah. And LV, I think added for windows, another argument, which is zip uh, hyphen six, uh, to get uh, even better compression, uh, for the um, JDK 21 image. Why not? Uh, every byte counts. <laughs> Um, then we had, um, lots of changes, uh, a few weeks ago, because we changed it from using the Temerin Docker images to only the binaries and starting from Debian, Alpine, uh, UB9 and so on. And the next job we had to do was to keep only one Docker file per Linux image variant, because we had tons of Docker files, one for, uh, Debian, uh, Debian and JDK 11, Debian and JDK 17, and so on. And they compressed all of that into only one Docker file per Linux image variant. Congrats, and thanks a lot, Hervé. That will mean uh, less uh, time building the image, maybe, uh, but for sure we will have less main maintenance, and that's a good thing. Oh, the famous end of life, yes. Okay. The Alma Linux container image is the only, it only is available for Java 11. We've intentionally chosen that we won't continue doing Alma Linux because we've already got something in that variant of world with the Red Hat UBI images. Mm -hmm. And so with the UBI images, they provide for people who prefer an RPM style technology stack, that's, that's where they can find it. Okay, because you have the Red Hat and then you have the rest of the family, which is Rocky, Alma, UB, and so on. Right, Oracle, Linux. Uh, you can name several variants of of derivatives of Red Hat, but it's simplest for us. UBI, we already have many container images. Keeping our number of images simpler is a healthy thing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. And we also bumped the JDK 11 version to the 11.0.23.9. Uh, I don't think we are providing something for Alpine, um, are we? No, no, we we do, and we provide, and they and it was it is now available. That's the nicety okay. is the Alpine 11.0.23 is now available. Except it's only available for AMD 64 and not the other platforms, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, right, but I well, let's now you've got me interested. Let me check. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I maybe, maybe I shouldn't I'm wrong. have done. Well, let's let's I'll do a quick check because that's Thank you, Mark. that's an easy one to check. Jenkins slash Jenkins, and let's look at the Alpine containers. Okay, Alpine. Yeah, we've we've definitely got a. JDK, okay, JDK 11 is what we wanted to know about, okay. and it was yep. built an hour ago. I'll double check to see what version. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll download it and double check the version that, that is okay. included there. Isn't it listed on uh, the Docker Hub page, which architectures we are building for? Oh, yes. and Oh, that's right. And on Alpine JDK 11, we're only building for AMD 64. Cool. On okay. Alpine JDK 21, we build for ARM 64 and AMD 64. And on Alpine JDK 17, we only build for AMD 64. Right, yeah. right. That's right. I remember that. It was historically that they only provided ARM 64 can, um, builds oh, 21 and up. or Java 21 and later. Right. Yeah. Got that it. Wasn't free, but that's okay. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for checking, Mark. Um, then for the Jenkins agent, we had two new releases for the SSH agent and one for the Docker agent. We had the big switch. Thanks a lot for the great work, Hervé. Uh, the switch from Temerin base images to Temerin installer. Uh, that took quite a few weeks and I know why. I did the same work for the Docker uh, controller. 
and that was even more work to do for the agent. So congrats on that, Abby, and thanks a lot. We also had a Git bump version for Windows. We had some gelling improvement that were taken from the um, uh, Docker, uh, the controller images imported into the agent images too. I just can't remember what kind of improvement, but it's better now. <laughs> Trust me. Um, there was also a modification on update CLI manifest for Windows. And we had some dependency updates uh, for Java, thanks to the work of Hervé. Uh, everything now has switched to newer versions of JDK 21, 17, and 11. We also bumped the Debian Bookworm version. And um, it's linked to the Docker Hub used to send HTTP errors. Um, now that we have less layers and maybe even smaller images, uh, we have to keep an eye on it uh, during this platform SIG meeting to see if we can do anything better than what is already um, done. So um, as a reminder, we had failures during the deployment of agent because of great limits through their abuse um, defense, you know, at Docker Hub. And as we were building tons of platforms very rapidly in parallel on a single IP, uh, we had some 20, uh, 429 errors. Uh, Docker, just stop it, <laughs> please. So uh, the first workaround was to use three IP addresses instead of one, and that worked, and Docker Hub were okay with that workaround. But we had to do this replacement of Eclipse Tamarin base image with Eclipse Tamarin installer, so that we have less layers, less bandwidth, and so on. So that reduced our request per minute, but we have to um, stay awake and do our job uh, regularly. Is there anything we could do to avoid future um, HTTP errors with Docker Hub? We'll see. Uh, then I saw something on the list earlier today, or was it? No, no, it was on the infra. Uh, where is it? Is there on the one of the infra? Um, repository. Uh, Damien saw um, two months ago <laughs> that whenever we had a release, the readme file was not uploaded to the Docker Hub page. And that's a pity. And it has been sold, uh, I think, by Tim um, yesterday. So the credentials have been updated, and now the page on the Jenkins agent is up to date. Hooray! But uh, seeing that it's up to date now, we, we I think it was Hervé, um, said that there was some information missing. So we'll have to change the uh, readme.md and then automatically with every release, it will be uh, pushed to the Docker Hub page. Yeah, might be worth to update the description even more. Say, oh no, it was not Hervé. Ite Poreski, sorry, my bad. I don't know this quirky observer yet. Okay, done with that. Um, now, onto the Docker Base Quick Start tutorials. I can't remember if it was in the docs office hours or during platform SIG meeting, but I had quite a few ideas on how to evolve the current um, install Jenkins with Docker. I don't know if it can be called a tutorial or guide, whatever. And we discussed that with you and Kevin, and then we decided that we should do something pretty simple. So I made the first iteration. I have a simple just do a Docker compose up minus minus profile default, I think, and you're done. But of course, there are a few screenshots and so on to help. And I think I will do, I started that, but we maybe we'll discuss that during the next Docs Office Hours. Um, another section that would be, okay, there is some kind of magic implied, and maybe you would like to see the, how it is called, the wizard, you know, asking you for the administrative uh, password, and uh, what kind of plugins do you want installed, and so on. So maybe something that is just a level um, below what we are providing up to now. Mark, would you have any comment on that? Or is it uh, for that's, the... That's great. Docs? Okay. <laughs> That's not what I was looking for, but okay, thank you, Mark. 
Uh, now, uh, the work in progress on images. So the one I checked today on the controller is really big. Yeah, big enough. Adapt manifest unique Docker file per Linux variant. So it's not finished yet. The goal is to have only one update CLI um, manifest per variant of Linux because we used to have tons of different um, Docker files per uh, JDK version and Linux version. So it's a simplification. For the Docker agents, we have uh, a new PR today, but it's only a draft, so it won't be merge uh, uh, in the coming day, that's for sure. So Vincent Latton proposed a um, new parameter, a new option support, which is a no reconnect after, which is a downstream of something which has not been merged yet, which is also a draft. Oh, it's not a draft anymore. Okay, that's cool. So the goal there is to allow to abort retrying after a given timeout expressed in simple form. So we'll maybe see that in the coming weeks. And for the Docker SSH agent, it's a PR that has been running for quite a while. We didn't have time to investigate yet. For whatever reason, the new version of OpenSSH doesn't work for, I think it's for Windows, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Windows Server Core Images fails. We'll see. Time will tell. Uh, now, Mark, maybe you will have uh, some things to say about this one, because I didn't understand everything, but I think you know all the ecosystem. So I think it was um, Valentin Delay who... Uh, oh, it's too small. Uh, yeah, that's right. Who wrote on the mailing list about the minimum required Java version for plugins. So he has a plugin called Flyway API plugin, and... Flyway 10 requires Java 17. I thought that we were stuck with Java 11 for plugins because of, um, I don't know how it's called in Maven, but there is something uh, because we are inheriting from the Pom parent, I think, that says, no, everything has to be JDK 11. But that's not the case. It's not as simple as that. So it may be possible to have a plugin built with JDK 17. Yeah, or, it's, uh, it's close to as simple as that. All right, there is... <laughs> So by default, uh, a plugin inherits its configuration from its parent, the parent yeah. POM. The parent POM says, build with, build, generate Java 11 bytecode, no matter which Java compiler you use. So whether I use 11, 17, or 21, by default, it will always generate Java 11 bytecode. However, um, Vincent Latomba and uh, Basil Crow realized at the contributor summit in February that there was a way they could extend the setup to allow us to specify, no, I mean it, I want Java 17 bytecode. And that that will actually be quite valuable for us as we make this transition from we support 11, 17, and 21 to October of 2024 when we say, or November 1 of 2024 when we say, we no longer support Java 11 bytecode. And so we're going to be in this transition period where some things may need to generate Java 17, Java 17 bytecode. And even though that will prevent them from being used as a plugin on a Jenkins controller that is choosing to run Java 11, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's a, that's a, a thing that the Jenkins update center actually doesn't check right now. So users could start Java 11. They could choose to install this new version eventually when it releases of the flyway 10 plugin, and it will just fail to run, right? Because oh, okay. it's got Java 17 bytecode and there is the, the update center doesn't have a facility to handle that, but we know we've got this transition period where at least we need to be able to, to or some plugins build them with Java 17. So, so that's the technique that's being used, is using this technique that Basel and Vincent identified together at the Contributor Summit in February. And then what they've discovered is, if you scroll a little further down, you'll see, oh, except this plugin is released in a desire, very desirable way with automated release. And yeah. automated release today only builds with Java 11. And so right now there's a pending pull request from Hervé to proposing to switch that to use Java 17. Yeah, I think I saw the link earlier today. There, it's uh, right there. It's on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 
Thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, yeah, when you explain it, that makes totally sense. <laughs> Thank you. And that's a clever way to handle the, the transition, I would say. Uh, but of course, we wouldn't recommend anyone to move their plugin to GDK 17 unless they are stuck because of a dependency that's moved to GDK right. And and Valentin's Valentin's use case Valentin's use case is exactly the kind of use case that that we could see. There are some components where they absolutely require Java 17. We uh, J, the JGit project, for instance, is now planning its next major release will require Java 17. Um, the Git client plugin will actually choose to not use that release for a oh, while. Really? Yeah, I, I don't want to mess with with that. So we will we will choose to stay back level until after Jenkins Core requires Java 17. But but it's a choice that Valentin cannot use Flyway, the new Flyway release, unless he built, compiles with Java 17. Got it. Thanks a lot, Mark. That was crystal clear. Uh, speaking of Java, um, Adoption Summit will take place online next September. So, um, <laughs> it's just the two of us, but <laughs> would anyone like to submit a talk about Jenkins' use of Timurin? Of course, I could do it and I will do it if nobody uh, wants to do so. But if anyone knows better than I do about Jenkins' use of Timurin, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to have you do the talk because there, there are a lot of there. Are, there's a there's a really attractive interaction between the Jenkins project and the Eclipse Temerin project, right? We we use their their builds and we ship their builds in our container images, and we're we're very pleased with them. We like their APIs that let us detect new releases, and it it just works well for us as a distribution. And they use Jenkins to build. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Eclipse Timurin. We don't want to talk about their pipeline, but they use Jenkins, that's for sure. And we have good relationship with uh, Eclipse Timurin. And frankly, they all, you know, they are, allow us to do some edge testing. I remember when we started with uh, JDK 19, um, last year, I think, uh, we could use their um, build. When I started uh, tinkering with a JDK and Risk Five, I could use their builds. So, yeah, Timurid, we love you. Uh, <laughs> now on to Java Twenty One support two plus two plus two. Mark, is there anything new regarding this uh, discussion and proposal? Other than what was just noted about this Java 17 uh, need to be able to have a way to build with Java 17, I've got a bunch of work still to do to get things into the backlog that represent mm -hmm. what the work is to for us to drop support for Java 11 and switch to requiring Java 17. And we're we're getting very close now. My my initial hunch is we may switch to Java 17 required in Jenkins Weekly as early as mid-July. Uh, so really? Got, oh. Yeah, so that we've got plenty of time to to explore it in Weekly before we've made the switch in Jenkins LTS. Knife edge switches like of that nature, particularly given the complexity of the spring security update. Yes, next subject. This one is not funny. <laughs> so... Uh, I didn't see much activity on this one, despite being a big, important subject. Oh, oh, actually, and so I'm I'm delighted to share that there is significant activity oh, happening. Cool. So, I'm very My very bad. grateful to Basil Crow has created a created a prototype back in 2022 of the of the upgrade to Jakarta from Jakarta EE8. Java X dot servlet to Jakarta EE9, Jakarta dot servlet. And, and that upgrade, he's now refreshing that prototype. In addition, Olivier Lamy had created a prototype that was looking at the transition from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. And that transition prototype has actually also received a little more work from Olivier. So very grateful. And Adrien Le Charpentier has agreed to help with this. Uh, he's on vacation now, but next week when he returns, he'll he'll be helping with the effort as well. So we've got several people who are interested in this who have started the work on it. It's an enormous amount of work, but yeah. the work has started. That's 
pretty cool. So do you think we'll meet the deadline? Oh, <laughs> don't, oh no. don't know. I, and I'm actually not overly worried about the deadline yeah. because the Jenkins project has in the past shipped components that were out of date and we've survived just fine. So if we weren't able to get this in in time for the October brand new release that requires Java 17 as its minimum version, if it had to wait three months, okay, it will wait three months. During that three-month period, there will be people who complain, hey, you're still running an old version of Spring Security. And we will agree, yes, we are. And that's that's where we're at. So I'm not I'm not panicked about it that, yes, we're going to keep going. And and we know how to handle this. We've done it before. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, thanks a lot for your insight, Mark. Anything else to add to the agenda before we wrap up? That's all that I've got. That's all that I got. Also, thanks a lot for your time, Mark. Uh, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. Until then, happy Jenkins. Bye-bye.